Hello, welcome to me with Margaret Taribo. Um, this is a, a platform where we look at subjects that impact on our communities, where we learn it's about motivation, it's about education, and it's about engagement. We're looking at the subject of healthy summer. So let's talk summer. Hey, summer's here. As exciting as this sounds, we can and should be proactive in maintaining our mental well-being. And this is why. A new study in medical students finds that summer, not winter, is the season when people are mostly likely to have higher levels of circulating stress hormones. In other words, an increase in your heart rate and blood pressure. These findings contradict traditional concepts of the taxing physical toll of winter and the relaxed ease of summer. And this is, you know, if you look at the American Physiological Society, this is taken from their research. So what does this tell us? We still need to be aware of this fact and take measures to take care of ourselves and our mental well-being this summer especially with the onset of heat waves. All-time high temperatures of 40 degrees in some parts of the UK, like we've experienced recently, the political issues, the potential strikes, a possible rise in COVID-19 cases. This has happened again, and there's more. So let's look at some practical things that we can do. Let's watch our emotional well-being. I am now learning the value of nature and outdoor space during this season. We can make the best of the warm weather. Let's breathe in the fresh air. Let's do some recreational outdoor activities. These go a long way to promoting self-care and help us to cope better with whatever we have or may be facing. You really can't get it wrong with walking. I do that and that's my best form of exercise. So what about our environment? People are going on about environment. Our environment plays a role in our well-being, trust me. I have also learned, for example, that staying in a dark, quiet room, apartment can be depressing. It's important to let light in, to listen to music, to read books, to call friends and family, and don't isolate yourself. Also, there are people who have been exposed to physical, emotional, or mental abuse or even an environment where there is constant conflict, fighting all the time. This could turn their environment toxic. In our work with the community, we provide spaces for parents and children to engage in fun activities in the summer and in every holiday. And this is to promote their well-being. So let's make the best of that. Now let's look at our intellect. It's always exciting for our children and wards to take a break from the classroom, isn't it? It's also important for them to enjoy the summer. Some of these children want to stay away from the academics altogether. However, in our work with the community, it's been quite empowering to see that when families engage in fun family learning activities like arts and crafts, music, games, trips, this boosts their self-confidence and reduces learning loss. It also makes them school ready for the new term. They go back to school with so much of confidence, with so much of boost, with so much of excitement. That's what we want to see. And let's look at our social connections. Safely connecting with friends and family is equally good for our well-being. This is usually a time for some families to take a vacation or time off to visit. Our summer holiday clubs, I cannot but overemphasize this, is to connect through volunteering, people, activities, and outings. So let's do it. And finally, let's look at the spiritual aspect. We can improve our spiritual well-being if we want to have a sense of purpose. Taking part in selfless acts, practicing gratitude are a few ways you can do this. Personally, being a person of faith involves these things for me and it's important to my well-being. So what about you? So let's look at this, our environment, our intellect, our social connections, and even our, the way we do things together. It's very important. So let's have a healthy summer. Thank you for watching 
me with Margaret today. I'll see you next time.